Roxo Media House. Stays on his feet. Morris to throw. It is caught for the touchdown. What a play. Savion Williams saves the bacon of Chandler Morris. And TCU is an extra point from tying the game. Welcome to Inside the State of the Frogs. I'm here with Coach Sonny Dykes. My name is David Hawthorne. I'm a former frog and played in the NFL for 10 years. Uh, just happy to be back at TCU interviewing Coach Sonny. Yeah, glad to have you. Glad, to, glad you came back around. I appreciate you, you being here today. Man, I wish we were here under different circumstances, you know, but uh, there's ebbs and flows in the season. So how, how do you describe last week? Well, it was a tough game. I mean, it was one of those, um, you know, to talk to the team a little bit about it. I mean, there's... You know, there's things you have to do to win a football game, and there's things that you can't do and win a game. And we turned the ball over four times through four interceptions, uh, gave up a block punt. So, you know, pretty impossible to win under those circumstances. And so we really didn't give ourselves much of a chance. Um, you know, love the fight of the team. You know, we got down. Things looked bleak. The guys kept fighting. The sideline was really good. It was really proud of our guys for continuing to battle. We just made, you know, too many mistakes and dug ourselves too big of a hole to get out of. Absolutely. So, uh, so we took a big blow at the end. Uh, how is Chandler? Yeah, so Chandler uh, basically kind of did the same thing he did to, to his knee last year. Sprained his knee. Um, you know, it's probably going to be a week-to-week -week thing, probably going to be at least a month. Uh, so, you know, Josh hoover has got an opportunity now to step in and take over. And excited about what he can do and what he's going to bring to our football team. I certainly hate it for Chandler. Um, you know, he's worked incredibly hard, uh, was, was really – uh, improving, you know, week to week, and and uh, very disappointed for him. But again, looking forward to, to seeing what Josh can do, and and you know, it's going to be a different team with Josh as our quarterback, and we'll see how we go from here. I remember a quote earlier this week. You said the guys are playing hard; they're just not playing winning football. Um, could you elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah, I think that's. You know, there's certain things you can and can't do, and we've talked about this at length to our players. You know, when we win the turnover margin, or we're the same. You know, then we I think we're 14 and 0 uh, under those circumstances, and when we lose the turnover margin, uh, we're uh, 0 and 3. And so we've got to do a good job of of making sure that we don't turn the ball over and we get some turnovers defensively, which we didn't do. Um, you know, we did some uncharacteristic things, gave up a blocked punt. We've had some players that have done some things that have been a little bit surprising. You know, you go back to the West Virginia game a couple of weeks ago, and you know, Griffin Kell's an All Big 12 kicker for a reason. He's been a great kicker for us and struggled a little bit in that game. And you know, we had some guys on our punt team do some uncharacteristic things last week as well. And so we've got to do a better job of getting those players ready. I mean, it, it always comes back to coaching. I mean, that's that's the thing is that when your team doesn't prepare well or play well, it's it's on the coaches and the players have to go out and play. But we've got to do a better job of getting them ready and, and executing in critical situations. And that's been something that's really plagued us all year. Even in the games we've won, we haven't we haven't really executed as well as we need to in the red zone, um, in critical parts of the game. And so we have to continue to get better at those situations. And when I think about where the Frogs are right now, you know, it takes me back to uh, when I was in Seattle. Uh, when I was in Seattle, we were a decent football team, right? It just wasn't great. You know, we uh, won all of our home games, lost all of our away games, right? We were in a, we were in a funky situation. We knew we were a good team, uh, but we were just missing some things, right? The things that we were missing uh, was just was just execution, right? We just didn't execute at a high level, right? Uh, crazy enough, we got it turned around. You know, we went into the playoffs five and five, yep. right? Uh, Drew Brees came down uh, from New Orleans, and we won that playoff game. They were a 13 and three team. We were a seven and nine team, yep. right? So uh, always hope, you know. And it, it took it took it took a lot of leadership to step up to make it turn around. Yeah, yeah. I think the big thing for us is is you know we do think we have a good football team. Now we haven't played that way. And at the end of the day, you're not a good team if you don't play well. And so we've got to we've got to do that. I think it all starts with what you said earlier. We just have to do a better job of executing. And again, in particular, when we get in the red zone, that's been something that's plagued us. In particular, we got to do a good job getting off the field on third and fourth down defensively. Um, we got to do a better job not giving up big plays. We've got to, you know, get our offense into a flow. It just seems like every time we get into a flow, we get a penalty, we do something, have a negative play, something like that to set us back. And so what we have to do is just execute at a higher level. And again, that comes down to we got we got to be better coaches. We got to coach more details, and our players have to play that way. And and you know if we do that, I think this has a chance to have a good football team. And I think we're all focused on putting the first half of the season behind us, focusing on the second half, and and just trying to win a game against a good BYU football team. And I think that's where it all begins for us is 
don't worry about the expectations. Don't worry about any of that. Let's just figure out how to win a game. And then if we can see if we can't build on that and, and see where that takes us. My old ball coach used to say, let's get back to the basics. Yeah, I think that's, that's the truth for us. I mean, I think, you know, playing winning football is the deal. And, and that's what we have done historically very well and what we did well last year. And, and that's what's uh, plagued us when we've lost games this year. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this break. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Welcome back to State of the Frogs. It's time for Student Question of the Week. Hi, I'm Isabella Tankersley. And I'm Olivia Tankersley. We're both sophomores here from Fort Worth. I'm studying criminal justice and psychology and I'm studying criminal justice and journalism. And we both work for the men's and women's tennis teams here. Our question for you, Sunny, is, how do you balance home life and football? Wins, losses, anything, it's gotta be pretty tough. Olivia and Isabella, uh, you know, we try to balance um, football and home life. It's, it's very difficult during the season. You know, I think at the end of the day, you know, my primary role is to try to be a good husband and a good father to my kids. Um, they win and lose just w with us. I mean, they're completely invested in, in our season. Kate certainly is, uh, my kids certainly are, and so it's disappointing uh, when we're not winning. But at the same time, you know, we're a family and, and we're blessed and, uh, to, to be at TCU and to be here. And uh, we're so fortunate for the many things that we have. So, you know, it's hard, it's, it, it, it takes a lot from everybody. But, uh, but again, at the end of the day, uh, we're just fortunate and blessed to have a chance to be here and be around these players every day. And, and, um, and try to improve our team, and it's, it's fun to be a part of it. Thank you, Coach. We'll be right back with a preview of BYU. Stay with us. You know, we wouldn't be able to do the things we were able to do this year without the Flying T Club, so we got to continue to, to get people involved. It's, it's more important right now than it's ever been. Flying T is special. It's, it's, it's the best thing that I've encountered in college. It allows us to be able to offset a lot of the costs that our scholarships aren't able to cover. If people like winning, invest in in, in the Flying T Club and NIL. Uh, it's almost a necessity now in uh, the college football world. I mean, you got to kind of invest uh, in the programs and what you put in is what you get out. Welcome back to State of the Frogs. I'm here with Coach Sonny Dykes. So this week we got BYU. Uh, they're a 4-1 team coming off of a bye week. What are you expecting out of them? Well, they're a good football team. As you said, 4-1, uh, uh, you know, went on, went on the road and beat Arkansas. Um, you know, beat Cincinnati most recently and then just had a bye. And so they're a team playing with a lot of confidence right now. Their quarterback has gotten better and better every week. Uh, Keaton Slovis is a transfer from USC. Um, he's been a couple of different places, is, is the guy and a really good quarterback. Uh, they're throwing the ball well. Their offense is playing with a lot of confidence. And then defensively, it's a typical BYU team, you know, big up front, uh, physical, um, you know, a, a just an overall good, solid football team. They've been playing well on special teams. So a team that's playing, going to come in here rested, a team that's going to come in here with a lot of confidence, and you know, we're going to have to rally the troops a little bit and get our guys ready and go play hard this week. But you know, I, I love this football team. I love these guys. I, I think they'll respond, and, and uh, I think we'll play our best game of the season. Any real history with Coach Sataki? You know, I, I know Kalani pretty well. We're actually uh, buddies and have a lot of respect for him, and um, it's going to be the first time I've coached against him uh, when he's been the head coach. But good football coach. They, they've got a great tradition at BYU, and – and uh, a lot of history with that program, and he does a tremendous job. Oh, thank you, Coach. Well, good luck against BYU, and until next week, go Frogs. Roxo Media House.